One of the biggest challenges, personal challenges that we have is to have an experience which is, let's say, otherworldly, not accord in accordance with the physical laws that we've been told this reality is made of, is that when you go and tell people about it, they immediately try and take it off you. They'll dismiss it. They'll tell you you saw a weather balloon, or they'll tell you that, you know, it's just guys horsing around with boards on their way home from the pub, okay? And one of the diff most difficult things to do then is to hold that, to hold that experience. They had an aeroplane. Eles tinham um avião to tell them where they made mistakes. Para mostrar para eles onde eles erraram. There is a certain kind of integrity, I believe, that's needed in a person to be able to um, stand on your own and <clears throat> make a distance between what people are telling you and what people are saying, and make your own mind up. I believe that it's personally liberating to be able to do those kinds of things. So my advice to anybody who inquires uh, into the nature of crop circles or UFOs is to be very careful uh, who you tell and how you tell until you've grounded the experience in yourself and you're certain of it for yourself. And then no one can take it away from you. But if you immediately go out and blurt it out and tell everybody in the pub, you'll find that the it will just fizzle away and then you'll start to doubt yourself and that's why I spent 10 years in the formations pretty much on my own with just my teacher and I didn't really get involved in any groups or any other people that were gonna let's say pollute my mind or try and make me doubt myself until I had established enough that I was sure for myself now nobody can take it away from me. There have been a bunch 25 years of studies of, of physical aspects to crop circles on the crop and the soil BLT research, a man called John Burke, uh, Dr. W.C. Levengood and a lady called Nancy Talbot have a website and they have published numerous results of all of these scientific tests. The short, the short version of what they found is that they found that microwaves, electricity and magnetism are present, uh, the crops have been affected and the soil has been affected with those three terrestrial energies uh, and so whatever it is that's, that's that's causing these plants to lay down is seemingly harnessing energies that we already have here on the earth in order to make that happen. Uh, the science proves that there is something anomalous going on but again it doesn't seem to have been enough <clears throat> to um, cross that paradigm threshold. My friend Michael Glickman and I work very close together. He's a professor of architecture and he's got a very grounded mind in how people make things on planet earth. Um, we like to refer to the intelligence that's behind the crop circles as a teacher and um, it lays down puzzles for us and when we get those puzzles, when we understand that uh, a, square, a solution to squaring the circle for example is inside a crop circle, it's almost like we get a pat on the head from teacher and the next level of the puzzle comes out. So we, fit, we, we, we really feel that there is this interaction between the teacher and us and that you know sometimes as I said in my lecture that it gives it took us 25 years to figure out that they were squaring the circle and showing us these solutions but when we did we we, we had a formation in 2008 which which brought pi into you know this infinite number this this thing that we uh, have trouble dealing with on earth it brought it, it brought it down and, and both Michael and I felt that we we were being given a um, a nod from teacher to say you're on the right track guys. The origins of it seem to have started in, um, in Wiltshire. There are reports that uh, back in the 1600s that people uh, were finding simple circles in their fields but this particular campaign of the crop circles started with simple circles and has evolved into very very complex geometry and we've never ever seen any of this in recorded history before. Um, there is definitely a progression definitely a leading towards more complexity and it's definitely an unfolding of a long communication that hasn't finished yet. Headaches, nausea, um, feelings of elation, feelings of joy, feeling drunk, 
Uh, there were there were circles inside the formation that appeared because we were the first to go in it and it, and it just appeared the formation that appeared in front of us. When Paula and I went inside that, we both had a headache for a week. Um, but there were some circles in the middle. There was these two. It was like a little tail in the middle of the two crescents, and it was a very weird energy inside that. So if we stood in one of the main circles, we felt fine, and if we jumped into one of these little circles that was in this little towel, we felt drunk and dizzy, and then we jumped back out, and we did this several times to make sure we weren't imagining it, but there were definitely some physical effects like that happening to us. Also, I've worked as a tour guide for uh, seven or eight years, take people to the crop circles and I've been able to closely monitor their reactions and I've seen the whole gambit from people breaking down in tears to people you know, being completely elated and high and also the effect can last later it can come out they can go home and then all of a sudden they said they were engaging in a conversation with their friend and they found they stayed up all night talking and they, they had enormous amounts of energy to just talk about this stuff so there's definitely something that it does to us. I feel um, for the first several years uh, after the first encounter uh, I wasn't grounded. It was really really difficult to be grounded. Um, I would say that um, it was fair for people to say that I was manic but I worked very hard to ground myself and my martial arts training helped me with that and um, and I feel very grounded now and I, you know, I, I am very grounded so much so actually that I'm a little nonchalant when big powerful experiences happen I can just take them like that because it's kind of commonplace um, but I got a feeling that at any moment it could just bounce me into another sphere if it wanted to um, and I'm, I, I can say that I'm sort of prepared for that but I don't know